Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I got a video for you on how you can use Airflow to manage and orchestrate your AWS Lambda functions. So AWS Lambda, if you haven't used it before, is basically a event-based serverless uh, scheduling system, we're not even scheduling system, really a serverless scripting system where you can have actions that you define that will happen you know, let's say, hey, if data is uploaded to an S3 bucket, Lambda can take that uh, data stored in that S3 bucket uh, and then drop some columns from it. You know, you can see some examples here and then upload it into your backend database. Or it can run some image resizing code, like in this example. Um, and so it has a bunch of different use cases. And the key benefit of it is that, hey, you can have code that you don't doesn't cost anything to store and it can wait there ad nauseum until any kind of event happens and then trigger and do that operation for just the compute that it takes to run that exact operation. Now, this is really great. You know, serverless scheduling compute tools are awesome, um, but integrating it into a larger data pipeline can be quite difficult because there isn't really much of a UI for defining like chains of actions for a Lambda function. Um, and so that's where Airflow comes into play. So what I'm gonna show you today is how you can use Airflow to manage and orchestrate your Lambda functions in different ways so that you can then integrate them into the rest of your data pipeline. So you can get kind of the best of both worlds. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to kick it over into VS Code and show you how to get your environment set up and start writing your first Lambda deck. So here in VS Code, uh, I'm using the Astro CLI to run a local Airflow environment. So if you want to install Astro yourself and run a local Airflow environment, just run brew, install Astro, and then what you can do is just astro dev start, and then you can write astro dev init, and you'll get this fully empty kind of Airflow file over here on the left. Um, and then within this requirements.txt file, no matter how you're running Airflow, you're going to need to add the Apache uh, provider's Amazon package. Uh, and this will not only provide the provider that will allow us to actually use our glue, our sorry, not glue, our Lambda operations, but also uh, anything else you want to do within uh, AWS. It's really nice to have it all in one easy to use package. So then here in Lambda, um, what we're gonna do is import a whole fun list of different packages and requirements. So first, just in annotations, just for annotating our code, JSON to be able to deal with JSON payloads, uh, zip file, because you actually need to zip script file before you upload them into Lambda. So we'll need to be able to script our function that we're gonna create and then upload here. Uh, then we're also going to have date time and bytes IO. Date time is just, uh, a way to translate into you know just raw numbers into date times um, and then bytes io is similar to any other io uh kind of operation where it's just going to act as a file buffer so instead of needing to save a file to our local system before we upload it we can just save it into this bits io buffer then we also have boot 23 which is the good old uh kind of hook of interacting with aws products then you'll still have our task decorators chain just for chaining all our tasks together uh, our DAGs model, then we have the two Lambda functions. So the Lambda create function operator and the Lambda invoke function operator. Uh, then we also have the Lambda function state sensor. So a sensor to check on the state of a particular Lambda function. And then also the trigger rule and a few different utilities for just uh, connecting to our AWS environment and getting information around it as well. Uh, so those are all of our packages. So now we've got those set up, we can start writing our DAG code. So here we're gonna set a DAG ID, just to set it to example Lambda. Uh, then we're going to get our role ARN um, and our system context builder. So this is just going to allow us to authenticate into AWS using a role ARN key. Um, so if you're not using uh, this method of connecting, you're just gonna sub in a uh, connection ID for AWS within your AWS tasks. Um, then we're also going to define some code content. So this is going to be the Lambda function that we're actually going to trigger. So just going to accept some default arguments, nothing really special here, and then just print hello. So really simple uh, Lambda function because you know we're just trying to show the methodology around it, not necessarily get super crazy with our Lambda functions. Um, so now that we have that defined, we're then also going to create a zip file from this uh, code content that we will then upload into Lambda. So here, if we go enter, create this file, um, we're going to define this as create zip here. And it's going to read in our content and then with bits IO as our zip output. So what this is saying is that for every output of this, store it in that bits IO buffer so we don't actually have to save it on our local machine. 
Um, and then what we're going to do is have a for loop that is going to go through our zip output. So here, C, and it's, sorry, it's not a for loop, it's just a kind of nested function um, where we have as zip file, so zip file, that zip file. Um, and you know, again, this is just functions that allow us to turn it into a zip file here. Um, write, which is just the method W here, uh, zip deflated as zip file. We're going to set the info um, as lambda function.py as our name. We're going to set this external identifier. Um, this is just converting the type to 00777, which is just a way of condensing your data. Uh, there's not really a better way of explaining that. It's just like a methodology. Um, and then we also have write string. So here, this is kind of the key point where we're just taking that info from this code content, taking our info of what you want the uh, file name to actually be called. And then it is going to write that and create a new zip file. Um, and then we're going to return the output of zip file that output read. So take that produce zip file and return it as an output of this function. Then what we'll do next is also define a second function that will just clean up and delete our lambda after we're done with it. So here we're doing trigger rule all done. So this tag was made before teardown tasks were a thing. So you could have used this as a teardown task. Um, but here we're just going to delete lambda function name string. Um, and then this is just using boot23 to log into our lambda client and delete this particular function. So nothing too crazy there, just kind of a standard cleanup function for this tag. So now that we've written our two opening Python functions, we'll also define our DAG code. So just defining our DAG and then using those kind of housekeeper functions to just create an AWS environment and then test it so that our rest of our uh, operations will use this created AWS environment so we don't have to pass the connection name. However, again, if you want to just use the connection name method, uh, all you have to do is in any of the tasks that are connected to AWS, just set the connection ID to AWS and it all should work the same. Um, so here we have our create lambda function which is using the lambda create function operator um, with the function name, lambda function name, um, and then writing runtime Python 3.9, so the base uh, Python runtime that we wanna use since lambda is based in Python. Um, our role ARN, this is where you would sub out for that connection ID if you weren't using the role ARN identifi or identifier to connect. Um, and then this handler is just saying, hey, this is just what we wanna to use to test it, um, just a defined you know, lambda function testing function. And then the code is the zip file that is being zipped up uh, at runtime in that task using this uh, create zip function that we just defined up here. So this is where that is getting called, um, where at the moment, and the reason why this is at the moment of runtime is zipping a file cost compute. And if this was outside of the task, then every time the DAG parser went through here, it would zip the file and just cause a bunch of unnecessary computational load. Um, so that's why it's nested there within the code um, as a function to be called whatever this create lambda function is called. So this is how you create a lambda function uh, with that lambda create function operator add your code, have that zip file actually take place, and then you can upload anything using this Lambda create function operator um, and upload that as a function of Lambda with Airflow. Now, if you also uh, want to monitor your Lambda function, um, we also have the Lambda function state sensor. Um, and so this is exactly what it sounds like, a sensor that will tell you, hey, wait for the Lambda function state um, to reach a success state. So, what this is going to do is just keep pinging that Lambda endpoint, the Lambda function that we just created until there is a success state. Um, and then you can set the poke interval by with this wait Lambda function state dot poke interval equals one. So if I go here, uh, this is the poke interval that you can set and you can change that to whatever you want. Um, or if you're really smart, you can use a deferrable operator downstream instead of a sensor for much less computationally expensive uh, way of monitoring that. So that's just how you create a sensor, uh, just because I want to show you. And then here we have a Lambda invoke function operator. So here's if you already have a function within Lambda that you want to just invoke, which I would imagine most of you will. Um, I probably recommend this approach to managing Lambda functions is just upload them separately, have them in Lambda, and then orchestrate them with Airflow. But I want to show you both ways. So here, what you're doing is just saying, hey, what's the Lambda function you want to invoke? Give it a task ID. And then it's just going to use JSON dub here to jump some basic data into that Lambda function. Um, and so this is where whatever you, you know, let's say you have some pipeline that processes of, uh, or runs an API call, puts some data in a data frame, and then triggers a Lambda function to consume it and, you know, run some ML processes, whatever you want on it. 
Um, this is where you could, in, in this payload, define whatever data you want to actually pass into um, the Lambda function that you're calling. So you can you know, pass in information dynamically from Airflow, and that's another benefit of Airflow is just kind of having that optionality. Um, then all we have left to do is just chain these tasks together, just because I just want to kind of show you a couple separate ways of interacting with Lambda. So just have uh, this chain with all of our different tasks, um, and then let's kick it over to the Airflow UI, and I'll show you what this all looks like over there. So within the Airflow UI, pretty simple here. Um, don't need to have a connection unless you didn't use that role ARN method, in which case just set a connection via the Airflow UI here. So you use it, but in terms of the actual Lambda function, so if I go in here, pretty simple uh, graph. You know, it's just going to be, hey, create a Lambda function and then upload it. So then here, uh, sorry, not moving that. So here, if we go into uh, the graph view, yeah, so here we go. Uh, you can see, so we have our create lambda function, wait function trigger, or wait lambda function state, um, and then invoke lambda function, and then our, just our cleanup task, we had this leading lambda. Uh, so you can see, pretty simple DAG, uh, but again, just want to show you different ways you can create and interact with lambda functions from Airflow so you can integrate this into your existing pipelines. Uh, so I hope you learned something today. Hope you have a great rest of your day. Uh, data guy out. Peace.